This is a graphics engine made from scratch with no shaders, no OpenGL and no GLSL. Computer graphics is one of those topics that are just challenging to understand even for experienced programmers. And in this video, I hope to simplify the subject so you're not as lost as I was when I started. I'm going to walk you through all the steps, starting with basic vertex rendering, rotations, camera movements, all the way to texture mapping and even simple lighting calculations. We're going to be using only math equations and some JavaScript wizardry to simulate real 3D graphics. So to start, I rendered my canvas elements and made a game loop to render a blank screen. Now, the first thing to note about 3D graphics is that this isn't actually 3D. It's a projection of 3D coordinates onto a 2D space. Everything you see in an engine, even the most minute details, are all made up of tiny dots or connected as triangles. These are called vertices, or vertex if it's singular. These vertices are moved around the screen space using something called matrix multiplication to create the illusion of a 3D environment. Essentially, you treat the vertex coordinates x, y, z like a one-dimensional matrix and multiply it by another matrix to move the vertex in the screen space. There's usually an extra column, the homogeneous coordinates, but this is only needed if you want to actually move objects via matrix multiplication or do more than one transformation at once. So the extra coordinates helps you hold translations. But I'm only doing simple transformations for my engine, and since we can just move objects by simply offsetting their positions, we will stick to just three. Also to keep the math simple. So we will start with creating a vertex class that takes an x, y, and z position with a function to draw the vertex. We can then create our first vertex and call the draw function in the main loop. Let's add three more to make a square. Now remember, to move these vertices, we need to multiply them by matrices. The question is, what are these matrices? Luckily, we don't have to come up with this stuff ourselves. People much smarter than me already came up with the solutions. Sources like Wikipedia have all the information, so we just shamelessly steal from them. The first is the projection matrix. Its values are constant, so we can just store it in a variable. The rest are rotations, but since the values are based off an angle, we'll have to wrap them in a function. We'll also write a function to multiply a vertex by a matrix. Essentially, you take each row of the matrix, multiply the values by the three coordinates, and then sum it all together to get its new position. We'll create a variable to store our starting angle, the values in radians, so we'll increment by a small amount, let's say 0 0.02. Then we can just multiply one of our rotation matrix by each vertex to make the square rotate. Now with works, we just don't see anything because our origin is at the edge of the canvas by default, making the object rotate off the screen. The solution is quite tricky, but essentially we need to centralize the origin. We do this by moving the object center to the default origin. We do our rotation in that position and then move it back just before we project it to the screen. And as you can see, our object is rotating as it should. You can even add a couple more rotations. Let's add a few more vertices to make this into a cube. Now our vertices are moving correctly, we just need to connect them as triangles to form our shape. We first need a function that takes two positions x and y and draws a line connecting the two. We can then set up a matrix of triangles where each row represents one triangle, with its values being three vertices that make up the three points of the triangle. Then in our game loop, instead of just drawing the vertex, we push the projected vertices into an array we can access outside the scope. Then we loop through our triangle matrix and then use the three indexes to get the three vertices in the array that make up the triangle. Then we just simply draw three lines to connect the three points. And as you can see, we have our cube made up of triangles. Pretty sick. The system we just created is what I call the foundation of 3D graphics. As long as we have the correct vertex positions of an object and we know how all triangles are connected, you can render pretty much anything. So if you're thinking, we could totally render more complex shapes. You are absolutely correct, yes. If we wanted to render a sphere, for example, we start by setting up a radius and segments, which is how many cuts around the sphere we're making. We look through the segments and calculate the latitude and longitude of the sphere, basically from top to bottom and around the sphere respectively. We can call this theta and pi. Then we find their x, y, and z coordinates using simple trigonometric formulas. Then just like before, we connect them into triangles by linking them to their neighbors to form tiny surface patches. This is all theory, by the way. And we have our rotating sphere. We can change the amount of segments to adjust the smoothness and even its radius to adjust the size. Now that our simulation is working perfectly, let's delete everything. Well, not everything. As cool as this looks, we're not using a graphics library, so naturally we don't have access to any form of GPU or hardware acceleration, meaning our engine is running purely on the CPU. If we're going to be adding textures and lighting in the future, we'll sadly have to compromise on the amount of vertices and triangles being rendered so my PC doesn't catch fire. For this reason, we'll be sticking to only cubes for our engine. And since we're rendering on the cubes, we can scrap triangles entirely and render everything as faces instead. But you know what's better than a cube? More cubes? Yes, wait, how do you guess that? We are literally the same person. We can just wrap our code into a cube class that takes x, y, z with height and depth. Then we use these values to set up each vertex accordingly. We'll start with three cubes and pass them in a word array. 
Next up, cameras. Cameras are basically just rotations with perspective. Rather than just moving the objects, we move our camera and make everything else transform in respect to it. So we start with the camera class and pass in our key variables. In case you're wondering, the cam Z is basically how far the projected screen is from our eyes. I already have a keyboard control file prepared, so we just need to check which keys are pressed and adjust the variables accordingly. We create our camera instance, translate all objects vertices in respect to the camera position, add our rotations, project the results, and offset the projected coordinates by the camera's position. And as you can see, we have our moving camera. The most challenging part of this project for me was texturing. See, the standard way of rendering textures is reading the pixels in the image file as UV coordinates. This is basically values from 0 to 1. The top left being 0, 0, the bottom right being 1, 1, and so on. These values are then used to draw the pixels on each triangle. And as you probably guessed, this is way too performance intensive for our engine. Because, again, everything is being run on the CPU. So I came up with my own solution. I called it the scanline technique. Essentially, you draw vertical slices on each face of the cube, starting from the left line all the way to the right. The slices are then drawn as cuts from our texture image. This technique is borrowed from old Studio 3D engines, which used a similar technique to render their walls. It's quite smooth, but it's still CPU intensive. The annoying part about this is that all we need to do is render images with skewed edges. That's it. If we could do just that, it would be as easy as just slapping a picture on all faces. I somehow stumbled upon a library that did this exactly. I gave it a try with hopes that they had more optimized way of rendering it. It was even worse. Turns out their engine is just using a similar technique as mine with a lot more fancy calculations. No hits though, I'm probably just not their target audience. So sadly, this would have to do for now. Which brings me to the part I enjoyed writing the most, which is lighting. Lighting only needs two things, a light source and a way to dim and brighten each face. We can adjust the brightness of each face by drawing a black field quadrilateral on all sides and adjust their opacity. As for the light source, it's just another cube rendered with solid color and blur filter. Now that the setup is complete, we just need a way to tell how bright each face should be based on its distance from the light source. Since the distance is in world space, we don't need to worry about projection. We just need to find the center of each face, calculate its distance from the light source and store it as an array in the object. We can then use the brightness value to adjust the opacity of the black cord laterals. We add a little rotation movement to the light source, and just like that, we have lighting. For funsies, I added this fair back, but with just solid colors. I then added the same brightness calculation on all its triangles. I honestly find it fascinating how you can casually make stunning scenes like this with just math and some code. It's almost like black magic to be honest. Which by the way took me a whole month to make mostly because I just suck at math. I'm glad it turned out well in the end. I plan to make more cool stuff like this in the future, maybe with an actual graphics library so we can go crazy with rendering and not worry about performance too much. I'll link all the materials I used to study as well as the source code if you want to dive deeper on your own. I hope this video was helpful. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. God bless.